So welcome back, everyone. Thanks for joining us for this special interview. We do this uh, every so often with one of this channel's longtime sponsors, the CEO of Double Gold, Colin Plume. Thank you. Welcome, sir. Hey, how are you? Yeah, good to be here. Yeah, we like uh, we like having you on every so often and then talking about this stuff. Uh, I normally talk about media centered stuff, but I am really into pretty much any news and especially the wars going on right now. We got you know, Russia and Ukraine, we got <clears throat> uh, Hamas and or, uh, Israel fighting Hamas and Gaza. And now I'm reading that we have very real trouble flaring up in the Red Sea, which means the Suez Canal. And I think most people know that it's a major shipping port. It's actually the fourth busiest shipping lane in the world. And so any disruption there is just gonna intensify the economic troubles that we're already seeing. So in that odious environment, what does that mean uh, for the dollar? I mean, right now we have gold surging to $2,130 and Bitcoin too, for that matter. So, you know, what does that mean for the dollar? And for people watching, what does that mean for, you know, if they're thinking about diversification or the retirement? Yeah. Well, first, uh, I just wanted to say gold uh, is in the 2030 range, 2040. It hasn't broken 2100 yet. Oh, um, oh yeah. It, it did break. Yeah, it did break over three weeks ago over the weekend. Um, it broke 2082, um, which is the all-time high. So it's it's definitely been flirting uh, with all-time highs. I've been saying for a long time that 2000 is sort of a psychological uh, number out there. And, and um, you know, a lot of people are concerned about the economy. I mean, Harry Dent came out and said that he thinks we're going to have the biggest collapse in the stock market that we've ever seen next year. Um, you know, he's a guy that's, you know, been right in a number of occasions in terms of predicting, um, you know, economic calamity. And I think it's, we're in such a, a strange time in that we have finally hit the point in the U.S. economy where we are so dependent on debt that we have to have money cheaper, otherwise things don't move, yet Cheap money also, in a lot of ways, makes it difficult for us to, to grow, and it also intensifies us with all the, the debt that we've had in this country. And, and you know, we're right now, our, our servicing our debt um, as a country costs us as much as our military budget. <laughs> so it's, which is a massive number. I mean, to think, to think about that, kind of take a step back and say that we, are, we basically have a big credit card bill that um, is more expensive than it costs to protect us uh, as citizens. So that's when you sort of run into some situations where, you know, we 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 always talk about being broke. But I, I think it's those numbers really highlight the fact that it's it's going to be difficult for us to continue um, unless we see some dramatic changes with the government spending changes. Right. Um, and and so yeah, we're not seeing that. We're actually seeing a lot of mass denial from the government and from the media, just about the economy in general. Yeah. Yeah. I was at um, this weekend. I was at Charlie Kirk has a uh, his turning point. His nonprofit has a big fest called American Fest. Uh, I went to this weekend. They had a huge lineup of speakers. Um, very interesting group. And, you know, you had you know Republicans and business people um patrick beck david was there and yeah i think vivek uh, and tucker were there too weren't they so yeah so vivek that's what i was going to bring up uh vivek um you know he's such a uh exciting speaker i mean he's just he was bouncing off the stage yeah. uh there in phoenix and they asked him he took a he did a q a and they asked him about the fed what he would do and he said, the thing you would do is fire 80 or 90% of the staff because it's way overstaffed. And then he said that he thinks, if, he said if he was president, he would peg us back on the gold standard uh, tied to commodities, maybe not solely gold, but maybe you have a basket of currencies, which a lot of countries have talked about. Um, but that was his, um, that was one of his remedies to, to try to, are spending under control. That was his one of his strategies, which I I haven't heard a presidential candidate say anything so bold um, 
uh, in a long time, right? I mean, they're usually much safer uh, in their language uh, yeah. than that. And then also the funny part was that he was cussing a lot. So the next day, Charlie Kirk uh, mentioned that he was getting a lot of emails because there was actually a lot of, there was a lot of college kids there through Turning Point, but there was also a lot of families that brought their kids, like young kids. So those parents were emailing saying, uh, you know, Vivek was using the F word and he was kind of going off. He was oh, going yeah. a little the crazy. STFU stuff. Yeah. 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 And so, you know, all these parents were like trying to earmuff their kids as Vivek's, you know, dropping F bombs. And he, you know, he, he laid into uh, someone from CNN. I can't remember who he laid into, but he kind of was kind of uh, ranting about him. Uh, but yeah, so it was, yeah. So oh, Vivek oh spoke. Uh, Van Jones. Yeah. Van Jones, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, and then uh, and then Tucker came out and spoke um, yesterday. So I caught. Actually, it was the last person I heard speak before I, I flew out of town. Um, and and Tucker had a ma biggest crowd by far. I think at the whole uh, event, uh, and he was just talking about about morality and what's kind of happening in the world and um, you know where we're kind of going. Uh, that we're going down kind of a scary path. Um, but but long story short, I think that the debt, uh, which was a real constant conversation at this event, was that the debt is really out of control, and that we need to you know pull back spending pretty dramatically. A lot of people said it in, in many different ways. Um, so it, it is something that we need to talk about, and, and that's why voting is so important that you can actually vote to, for people to have a more sound sort of business practices and the idea of, of slowing things down and, you know, obviously reducing the big government and, and moving in, in a lot of different directions is, is really important. Um, and for people so, that yeah. uh, that are watching that might not understand, sorry to, to cut you off there, just like, why is that a good thing? Why would we want to change over back, you know, back to the gold standard? Um, well, because you can't um, print money out of thin air if you're on the gold standard. You have to, you have, it has to be pegged you know, for before we went off the gold standard, every dollar that was out there had uh, gold behind it. So just couldn't print freely. So when Nixon took us, took us off the gold standard, you know, completely in 1971, um, we've been able to uh, just print as much as we have wanted um, and without any recourse because we're the world's reserve currency, we have this flexibility. We had it pegged to something, um, inflation would be lower, sub substantially lower. Governments, the government would have to have a budget, which they they haven't balanced the budget. I, I don't know how long it's been. Ten years. It's been a very long time. I think Clinton was. Or was Clinton? Is that the last time? Maybe yes. That I think was it longer. was. <laughs> um, so we we were you know we're in a position now where our our deficit and what we're spending is is ballooning and it's it's you know in, in a few very specific places it's um health obviously uh medicare medical um very expensive and people are living longer um in government programs um debt as i mentioned our our debt payments right now cost as much as our military budget so you have the money is coming out and in, in very typical places they know where it's all coming out from but no one's really ready to to do anything to to fix those issues uh which was a lot which was discussed at this uh american fest was that you know people are looking for a resolution and we can't just continue to um raise the debt ceiling every two months and continue to go down this path people want more sound money principles and that's why it typically always comes back to gold and silver as the currency because it, it is something that comes out of the ground and you you have to have enough of it to to back it and so it creates some uh some boundaries of spending we don't currently have and that's why uh the gold standard or or having like a fractional backing of gold with our currency i don't think we could do it from dollar for dollar i think there's too many now having some kind of system that that restricted our our spending um would be much much better for for you and I and and everybody listening, because we now, because of inflation, we have to a return on our investment to keep up. That's so high. Keep our standard of living, right? right. It's not like 
used to be. Um, you could you could make a smaller return, a safer return. Now, that's why you know crypto and all these things have come to the forefront is because people realize they need they need dramatic returns, so they're taking bold risk, and and a lot of them lose, unfortunately. Um, I don't know if you're big into crypto, but I saw the FTX, you know, the big scandal with FTX. Mm -hmm. And I knew this was going to happen. They're trying to pay people back that have been held hostage by this company. They want to pay them back in cash. They don't want to right. pay them back in crypto. And I, I find it so, I, I mean, I knew when this went down, this this is what they were going to try to do. But it, it sort of aligns with, oh, well, you know, we'll give you back cash. And also, with well, the other thing it does is that all those people have to pay tax. Every one of those people that get cash, now they've converted it, they're going to have to pay tax. So it's sort of a win for the government too. All right. Uh, but try to go in that direction. What, and why? Why couldn't they just give them back the, the crypto that they bought? You know, that's the problem with these, you know, these situations is they just present an opportunity for the government to win. Uh, and there's probably a lot of people that go, I don't want my cash back. I want the Bitcoin. I want the Solana. Or what, I bought what I, I want. What I bought, right? Right. Yeah. So, yeah, and you know, you know that you know what you were talking about. It's going to take somebody, you know, very brave. Somebody like Viv I, we've been calling him Vivek. I think it's Vivek, but uh, it's going to take someone like him because, you know, like anybody who comes out against the spending is going to get called a Putin lover or, uh, you know, yeah. they're going to go after them in some way because that money is going to come from some other program and nobody wants to touch any of these things. So, yeah, right. it seems like that's never going to happen. It's going to take a rogue kind of guy to do it. Yeah, a Trump sort of in the Trump vein, right? Someone yeah. that's not afraid and doesn't need the money and doesn't need the, you know, not doing it for to grow their wealth. Someone that's like, believes they can make some massive, uh, massive change. And I, I don't know if he, you know, I don't know if he's the guy or whatever, but he, he's been saying some interesting things. Um, and, you know, I, I think, you know, probably his biggest fault is that he's uh, not afraid to, to to get into it with anybody. And, and he's rubbed a lot of people wrong, which makes it sort of hard with politics to, to get some bills passed. But, you know, coming up on the end of the year, we're in December now, you know, a lot of people are, trying to decide what to do and they're trying to predict. I mean, you know, that's the thing with investments. You got to look at what's going to happen next year and what can happen for the next few years. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you my predictions uh, for next year. Um, I think rates come down as the Fed has has discussed, which means bank, you know, returns in the banks are going to come down. So I think the heyday of the 5% money is probably going away. Um, and, you know, we're getting back to probably two, two to 3%, maybe lower than that, which, any estimation is not going to keep up with inflation. Even 5% is not going to keep up. So I think that's uh, one of the things that happened. I think they're going to open up the money supply a little bit next year because, you know, the Fed wants to keep, you know, Biden in office. That's the smart move for them, right, to, to lower rates and to mm -hmm. hopefully open up the economy a little bit. So I, I and, and, you know, if you go back in history and you look at, the year before or during the election year there's always a lot of interesting things that happen uh with the fed and how they control the economy how strong they are and how they can really dictate who's uh elected or not elected um so i think that they are going to open up the money supply next year so i think things will kind of widen open which 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 will be great for a lot of industries real estate uh being one of them i think it'll it'll help obviously because you know real estate's been uh, uh, just dead, you know, there's no, right. no transactions happening. Um, and there's no uh, merger and acquisition transactions happening. I was just reading that mergers and acquisitions are a huge part of the economy, these large companies. Mergers and acquisitions this year were down 70%. And, yes. you know, some people would argue, argue maybe that's a good thing, right? They, they don't want these big, you know, companies becoming one big company. Uh, but also some mergers and acquisitions and a good, good amount of them, they actually improve the company, they improve the product, they make the company stronger. So this year, because of interest rates and just the whole volatility of the market, that whole sector has been dead. Uh, there's just no none of those large uh, transactions happening. So any like mergers, any you know loans or anything in that anyone in that world has been, you know, basically brought down to, to their knees uh, with these high interest rates. Uh, so I think that I think things open up next year. 
Um, and then it's like, what's going to happen with these banks, right? Are banks going to survive? A lot of banks are teetering right now, mm -hmm. especially mid, mid range banks. Are they going to survive uh, next year? You know, I think the only way they do is if, you know, loan pr productivity picks up and business loans pick up and, you know, commercial loans pick up a little bit. So that'll probably help them, uh, which I think having more mid range banks is a benefit to all of us. We don't want to have just these, you know, massive banks that control the money. Uh, so I think that's what we're going to see happen uh, in, in 2024. Do we get that massive pullback in the stock market? It's, you know, it's hard to gauge. You know, I know we've seen people say that it can have a, a massive, uh, unless there's some kind of dramatic black swan event next year. I, I, just, I don't see us dropping 50% of the stock market. Um, but you never know. There's, you know, we had COVID, you know, there's all these things that can happen out there. So right. you didn't ever really know uh, what could, what's around the corner here. So what are you thinking about the EV market and how that's affecting things right now, yeah, especially I mean, I with precious metals? Yeah. I mean, I think like, you know, you have so many new automakers uh, and EV coming up. There's, I was watching an interview with uh, the CEO of Rivian, the, the truck EV and you know, he was he was asked like, "Is Tesla a competitor?" And he said that there's so few EV manufacturers still that there's no real competitors. We're, they're all sort of helping grow that industry. Um, you know, and, and listen, I know people. I love gas cars, so I mean, I'm just gonna put that out there. As much as I love silver, I love. I have an old '68 Pontiac GTO. And I think I get like, you know, maybe four miles of the gallon on that. I mean, it's, you basically just drive from one gas station to the next, right? right. I mean, but I am obsessed with that car. Uh, I, I love turning it on. Um, I actually, uh, my wife, my wife almost killed me a few weeks ago. So I, you got to turn those old cars on for a few minutes before they really run. And uh, I turned the car on. I had the garage door open, but I accidentally left the door to the garage door open. So all the fumes came in the house. <laughs> And my wife was <laughs> was in there, so I take off and I get a call down the street from my wife saying, "You trying to kill? Like, what are you trying to do? You trying to kill me in here?" And I just I accidentally left that you know that door open. So, you know, just uh, for the record, I do. And that's love part gas of the cars. charm of it. That's part of the charm, yeah. And the smell, the you know, smell. my kids. I remember when I I took my young kids in the car in the back, and they're like, "Dad, I smell like." I'm like, "Yeah, that's cool." <laughs> You're, you smelling like gas is cool. That's why we have this car. You know, yep. this car only goes 50 miles an hour or whatever it goes. You know, it looks it looks cool. You smell cool. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think the EV market still, you know, still got momentum. Obviously, the cost of those cars has come down dramatically, which was the big problem. Two big issues was the cost, which has come down a lot. I mean, even Tesla prices have dropped. And then the you know the length of of you know how far they can get. And, yeah. you know, Lucid and a lot of these new ones are are breaking 400 miles on a charge. I mean, I don't know how many people are are, are driving more than 400 miles that consistently. Yeah, mm -hmm. maybe you're you're doing a road trip here and there. But I think for the most part, they've 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 worked out a lot of the kinks there. So I think that market's going to continue to grow. That's great. Great for silver. Um, that's going to be really exciting. And then on the catalytic converter side. Um, the, you know, the, a lot of the companies are moving to platinum uh, for usage. They're moving away from palladium. Uh, the Ford F-150 actually has about $2,000 in palladium in that uh, vehicle. Uh, the new Lightning that everybody loves. So you're seeing a lot of these, um, you know, besides gold, these alt metals, kind of like in the, in the crypto biz, silver, uh, uh, platinum, palladium getting a lot of excitement. Um, so I, I think those things are, are, are really good. And, and I think just overall, you know, you saw the alternative currency world really explode and continue to explode. Um, you saw Bitcoin again, you know, broke 43,000, it's pulled back a little bit, but really, I mean, I think that the, the reason you see people buy these items, these, you know, Bitcoin and these alternative currencies, it's really a reaction to the U.S. debt. That's really what they're. It, it, Bitcoin doesn't do what it does unless the if the dollar's strong, we're paying our bills. There's no Bitcoin. I mean, it's it doesn't it doesn't hold water. Um, but in this environment where people are just fed up, um, and they're looking for alternative ways to 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 use their money, you know, the idea of having a money like Bitcoin that has significantly outperformed the dollar. 
um, is is appealing. And so that's that's why you see these things come about. It's only because of reaction of of our overspending and our on our big massive uh, government debt. Yeah, and it's just a, it's an it's an overall distrust and the experts that you know keep saying these things, and yet people they feel the effects every day. You know, at the grocery or gas or wherever, and you know I, that brings us to the fact that I you know I get messages all the time right now in our Discord. There's people in there who were interested in the fact that you were going to be here. They wanted to ask questions. Um, I'm not yeah. going to take questions today, but it's really interesting. Oh, oh, oh you do want me to take questions? You want to take it? Let's do it. Okay, I will. All right. Well, I already have some questions. So that oh, okay. that I got from them earlier. I just didn't want people like coming in here and and. But we can do that if you want to. It's it's up to you. I don't, I'm okay to be harassed by questions. Okay, I don't wanna, that's cool. You know. All right, excellent, cool. I I didn't want to put you on the spot, but uh, we will see if those people are here. I think they are. So um, basically, we have all these people. They they want to get into this stuff for all the reasons that we've talked about, and I kind of equate it to working out you know a lot of people want to get into working out but it's intimidating because you don't really know what you're, you know if you don't know what you're doing and so what would you recommend that people do what's the first step in working out always start with push-ups that's <laughs> always my first and pull-ups start with the basics no um well that is true <laughs> that's a good idea sure. though <laughs> and i do i do them every day um but um no, I think like the basics is, is is getting educated in anything. I think that that's so, you know, that's the big thing that we've always focused on is just, you know, if you go into the gold and silver space, you could look at it. There's a million different ways to look at it. Some companies have thousands of coins and bars, all this stuff on their website. We don't do any of that. We basically sell between 10 and 15 different products Okay. Um, because those are the products that people buy. Those are the ones that the central banks buy. Those are the ones that um, institutions are buying. You know, during um, during the pandemic, you know, when it was really hard to get silver, I was buying a thousand ounce silver bars, and I was competing on purchases with with Comex because they needed the bars too. So we were actually buying the same bars for a lot of the same places. So, and so that just and the only reason I bring that up is to say that like I'm buying products that banks are using to buy or the or the etfs are using to back their et like we buy a lot of the same items because we know that those over time are going to get you the best return because you're you're getting the most value the most bang for your buck and i think that's really important so i think the first thing to do is like get educated call us we'll send you a free guide talk to somebody ask a lot of really important questions because it is different than you know, on your phone where you buy a stock or you buy, you know, in those situations, you're just buying a fraction of a company. As with us, you're actually buying the whole thing that you're the, you're the company, right? You're, you're in charge of it. And I think that's just alone is sort of a new concept for people is that the, yeah. the idea that they're owning it on their own. So I think that's the first thing uh, to do. And then just, you know, I would start looking at the charts researching you can call us and ask questions i mean our staff is really well uh versed in like what's the trends and what's happened in metals um over the last That's 10 good to 15 know. 20 years so we can you know you can always ask those questions like where was it you know where was gold 10 years ago where was it 20 it's happened what's happened the last six months i mean these are all relevant questions that i think that anybody should ask um so i think getting educated on those things is is really important and then just you know i think when you're looking at a, a more of a safety play like gold and silver and platinum palladium but you're balancing it with the other things that you have so you're looking at um your portfolio as a whole you know i got my house i got a little stock market i go like what's what where do i want it what do i want in sort of a safety play and that's how you determine um how much you want to put into uh into gold and silver um and you know, you know, obviously, there's people out there. I met the the ex CEO of Overstock, um, who's a huge gold and silver buff. We were talking about it, and he's got so much of his net worth uh, in gold and silver and Bitcoin, and so he has more than most. But he just believes the whole system, the dollar, and everything's going to collapse, and that's where his heart is. That's where he believes. I think you know, people, other people are like sort of in the middle. They like, yeah, that could happen. 
but if it yeah. doesn't happen, you know, where, where do I want to be too? So I think you have to figure out what your level is and then, you know, find a number that you feel comfortable with buying and, you know, test this out and get it shipped. And, and, and then I think you'll find, um, and read our reviews and do all those things. And I would do that with any company that you're going to buy any product, go and check, don't like go to the, go to the better business bureau, go, go to check reviews, yeah. go do all that, spend a little time, spend 20 minutes especially in our space being unregulated there are some bad actors out there and you want to be careful but i think you should do that with any any product uh, before you make a purchase yeah absolutely and you'll see and i've talked about noble gold's got five star ratings and good reviews all over the place but definitely you want to go check that out and like you said yeah. it is a balancing thing and you know i hear a lot from people asking you know they don't necessarily have a ton of money to put into it, but they want to try it out. And they're wondering if you have sort of like, you know, like hundred dollar bundles or something like that, sort of entry level ways of getting in to it. Yeah. So, so our, our minimum uh, cash purchase is 5,000 Okay. Um, because we're, we're sort of set up in a, in a way that we're, you know, if you're doing below that, I would say find a local shop, like a coin or, or dealer that can help you locally. Um, it, you know, when you're dealing with a firm like us, you're gonna get the metal shipped, you're gonna have a concierge, you're gonna, you know, there's a lot of people behind a purchase. So we typically focus on 5,000 and above for cash. And then for IRAs, we, we focus on 15,000 and above. Okay. The reason we do that is because with the IRA, they have to be stored in a depository, you segregate a storage, but there is a fee, you pay $150 per year. We don't recommend anyone to do less than 15,000 because you're going to have to store those metals for okay. 150 bucks, a year, which you're going to be responsible for. So those are sort of our minimums uh, set up. We don't have any uh, maximum uh, on a purchase. Uh, but yeah, anything above that is is sort of our, our wheelhouse. Um, and, you know, we we offer, you know, some incredible pricing. It's a great, even though gold and silver have been skyrocketing in terms of prices, we have some unbelievable pricing on Bullion bars, bullion coins. Um, there was a overreaction by a lot of the major mints last year, so they over minted. So we have a we have products at the lowest prices, uh, uh, near very near to the spot price, the lowest we've seen in years. Um, to give you an idea, during the pandemic, silver eagles, our cost was like anywhere from eight to ten dollars above the spot price. Uh, that that premium's way down. We're at like I think four or five dollars above the spot price now, um, so that's shrunk a lot. Bars, so it's it's a good even though price has gone up, it's still a very good time. Uh, there's there we have a good inventory and you can get great some great pricing uh, on on pro and and silver's still fifty percent lower than where it was um, in two thousand eleven. So it's still still you know all time high for silver is fifty. We're sitting in the you know twenty four twenty five dollar range. Okay, sounds good. Um, I wanted I want to uh, bring some people in to talk. I'm trying to get them in here right now, um, okay. but I did want to quickly ask you while we're waiting on that. Is, and this is another question I get. Uh, I do talk talk about in the ads about that there is always risk in investment, and they're just curious. You know, with the volatility and all this, what is Noble Gold's approach uh, to risk management? And are there any sort of processes in place to mitigate? any of those you know potential downsides well, there's risk in any investment right you know i think that's that's why you know it's important to be diversified um you, know, you have to if you buy a stock it, you know it loses 50 percent of its value you know that's it is what it is you know and and you know people always ask like what you know what can you do what they somehow they think gold is different that there's some kind of protections in place you know, I, I think the protections in place for metals are supply and demand, um, and liquidity, and fungibility. Uh, there's only enough gold in the world to fit in two and a half Olympic-sized swimming pools, so there's not that much of it. Wow. So there is a limited supply. Um, the biggest buyers of gold in the world are central banks. Like China has been buying tons of gold. Uh, it's even been reported this year specifically. Uh, it's even reported that they have way more gold holdings than it's reported, you know, because the World Gold Council has like a list of how much, how many tons each country has. And there's a lot of reports that they have way more because they mm. actually mine gold internally too. And they're not the best at re recording, <laughs> if you know what I mean. <laughs> right. So, <laughs> Why would they? <laughs> so, yeah, right. They don't want to disclose. So I think that's, 
you know, a good good thing in, in any investment is you want like supply and demand uh, uh, value. Um, fungibility, like it's, you can trade it anywhere in the world. You know, that's the cool thing about it is like ounce of gold here, ounce of gold in Dubai, ounce of gold in London, you know, there's right. always value anywhere in the world. So that I think is great. You know, there's there's not always that, you know, universal value of a product everywhere in the world, right? So um, I think that gives it some some strength. Um, and, and, and then I, I would just say that it's, you know, in times like this where we have, you know, we're in two wars here in the U.S., maybe a third potentially, yeah. you know, people, you know, t tend to go to safety, you know, during times like this, um, which is probably the only reason I would say is maybe that's right about next year is if we had that like black swan event, then I could see this, you know, uh, you know, maybe a big pullback in the stock market. Um, but I, I think it's yeah, there's always downside risk into anything um yeah of course that's why that's why i was talking about 2000 is sort of that psychological number for gold and i remember it broke a thousand in 2009 um you know there's people that you know it was just kind of, it was kind of flirting around a thousand and then it just once it broke through you and, and it hit you know 1900 and then pulled back to 12 and everybody said it was going to go back to a thousand it just kind of never did it just kind of Anytime it would hit a really low number, you just see the massive buying. Hmm. That's typically a good sign um, of of something that of an item that has inherent value is that if it hits a really good number, people are, are buying it, you know, pretty dramatically. So, uh, you know, you gotta you gotta risk is part of investing. Um, it, it's it's like it in anything, but I think we all have to make educated guesses about our. Uh, Investments. And so this is kind of out of my wheelhouse, but uh, one of our users here, his name is Riddle. He asks, do you think that BRICS has the influence and practicality to replace the petrodollar considering the flattening Chinese economy as well as Western sanctions on Russia? It's That's been the big conversation. I think that's the, the idea was, and they've wanted to do that. They've wanted to go away from the petrodollar when they're making large transactions. They are they are to some extent. I mean, they are doing less transactions in the dollar. You're seeing them make transactions. I mean, obviously Russia has been transacting in gold very heavily for the last you know year and a half um, because they've they have sanctions against them, and that's that's the big risk. If you look at you know um, central bank holdings of U.S. Treasuries. Those have shrunk so dramatically over the last 10 years. 10 years ago from today, you had about, uh, it was about a 70%. Most central banks had a 70 to 72% was in U.S. treasuries. Now we're below 60. We're at like 59.5%. So you're, you are seeing people move away uh, from the dollar uh, in terms of, you know, these massive transactions. Um, you know, Germany uh, brought back a lot of their gold from the Bank of New York. Uh, they wanted to have it internally because they were worried about our debt. So you are seeing people divest. Um, over the last six months, you've seen many um, heads of countries, um, you know, uh, France's president, many people saying, yeah, we're divesting from the dollar. So yeah. you can't have this thing move overnight. And also, I think at the end of the day, really isn't a better option out there that's been presented. And until there is a better option, dollar will still have some value to it yeah, right. in terms of countries because like we were saying like with china you know supposedly they have a lot more gold than they say they do but because they're they're the way that they report to the world and it's so you can't trust what they're reporting you know we're not going to move to the end until there's more you know uh transparency about how things are going in that country and what's going on with them and how much debt they're in uh, because you know, there's a lot of estimations that they're in pretty dramatic debt because they made a big real estate push uh, over the last few years, and they've been hurt by these higher interest rates of, that the world's having also. So I think until a better option is presented, you know, we're, the dollar will still be there. But the, but the big question will be in the next four or five years, is if China just says, we want to call in some of this debt, like we, we don't want to just take the interest. Right. You know, we want some of that That's principle back. And that's going to be the issue. That's the mm -hmm. real issue that we're going to run into um, because right. we don't have it. <laughs> right. And it looks like we actually have somebody here. 
What's up, Ashley? Nothing. Can you hear me well? We can hear you. We got Hi, Colin here wondering uh, what you got on your mind here. Uh, well, I'm not sure that I'm worthy of the time. <laughs> um, well, I'm 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 a poor hillbilly who is uh, who has my home paid off and I have zero debt, so I have some income that I'd like to contribute toward a retirement. And okay. mortgage and commercial bank securities are crazy. Real estate's crazy right now, and everything looks too volatile. And being undereducated about the subject, I'm kind of looking for a safe place to make an investment. Sure. So you are you still working, or you're no longer working? Yes, yes, of course I'm working. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. And you have a 401k at your job, or or? No, sir. I'm I'm. Uh, I guess you would call me an independent contractor or a work from home person. I only my my income is meager. It's pretty good for my area, but it's meager compared to the national average. I okay. only bring a little over four thousand a month. But other than utilities, I have no debt. My mortgage is paid off. That's amazing. So, That's so I have some. Um, is good. I'm I'm 44, so I have some income. I have no retirement, and I'm I'm looking for something that I can contribute to that will provide me with some sort of meager retirement. Yeah, absolutely. So what I would recommend is, um, I mean, it sounds like from your situation, you could be considered self-employed if you're a contractor. What you may want to look into is starting a, um, an individual retirement account, like an IRA. Uh, you could either do a SEP IRA or traditional or Roth. Um, and, and the reason you would want to do that is because those vehicles give you tax advantages, um, you know, whether... You want the tax advantages in the year that you put the money in, or if you want them later on, um, that would be a good way to, to to put some money aside that could grow a little bit easier. Because being 44, you still you know have a long runway to uh, build a nice nest egg, uh, and the fact that you don't have any debt, you can really start um, you know contributing and putting money away that can lead to to future growth. So, I would recommend looking into some kind of uh, retirement vehicle. That could get you, and you, you know, you could buy, you could buy gold and silver, or you could buy, you know, any other asset that you want. But I think getting some money um, in a tax deferred vehicle would be, be very wise. Well, uh, did you guys, did you guys have anything else for him? I actually have to bow out because I have to go back to work. But I, <laughs> I just want to say thanks, Colin, for coming and hanging out with the group. Hey, no, thank you. Yeah, I appreciate you jumping on 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 your break and and. Uh, you know, I, I hope, you know, this is informational. It was a lot of fun for me to answer questions. I'm always happy to do it. And, you know, if any, if we can ever do anything for you guys, you know, we're we're always around and love this show and, and just appreciate, you know, coming on and, and talking about, you know, something fun and, and something I love, which is which is precious metals. Well, we really appreciate it. I really appreciate it. And uh, again, if anybody wants to give them a call, it's 877-646-5347. And like I said, you can get the link, direct link there in the description and pin comment of most of my videos. Okay, so, thank you. Yes, and uh, so Colin, uh, I appreciate you coming. Did you have anything else for us? It's great. It's fun. I'll talk to you. Uh, have a safe, happy, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and I'll uh, I'll check you in 2024 and see if any of my predictions are accurate. Yeah. <laughs> well, I I really appreciate it. Merry Christmas, Colin. Thanks so much. Bye. Night.